This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash tipsquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to look at Lightroom 5 and its capability to edit 32-bit images. It's become commonplace these days to take a bracketed set of photos with your DSLR and then merge them to HDR using a number of different tone mapping software programs that are available today. However, Lightroom 5 can do a pretty good job of this on its own with just a little help from Photoshop, and today we're going to see how to do that. Now before we get started, there is one preference that we need to set within Lightroom. So in Windows, we're going to go to the Edit menu and choose Preferences, and on a Mac that would be the Lightroom menu and then Preferences. And we're going to switch over to the External Editing tab, and here we're going to find Photoshop as our primary editor. It may be Photoshop CS6 or it may be Photoshop CC. Either one will work, but the important thing is we want to set the file format to TIFF and not PSD. This technique only works with TIFF images, so if you have your preferences set to PSD, you'll end up with a file that Lightroom can't handle. With these preferences set to export to Photoshop as a TIFF, I'm simply going to shift click to select these three bracketed images, and then from the photo menu, I'm going to choose Edit In, and then I'm going to choose Merge to HDR in Photoshop. This will export the three bracketed images into Photoshop and launch the Merge to HDR Pro dialog box. I'll resize this so you can see it. And what you most likely will see by default is this dialog with these options, with the mode set to 16-bit. Now this is Photoshop's HDR tone mapping interface, but the controls here are kind of confusing and they don't match what we're normally used to within Lightroom and with Camera Raw. Not to worry though, because if we change this to 32-bit, we can bring this image back into Lightroom for tone mapping. We want to make sure this checkbox is not selected. If it is, we'll open this image in Camera Raw within Photoshop, and that's another way to accomplish the same task, but today we want to see how to do it in Lightroom. So with this box deselected, I'll click on OK, and this will bring it into Photoshop. And at this point, we have a 32-bit image. And you can see right here in the Info section of the File tab that it is indeed a 32-bit image. At this point, we simply want to close and save this image and go back to Lightroom. Here in Lightroom is the TIFF file. And again, you can see from the tooltip that it is, in fact, a .tiff format. With this image selected, we can go straight into the Develop module, and we are now editing a 32-bit image in Lightroom. So we can do all of our normal adjustments here. We can use all the controls that we're used to using, and we should feel pretty comfortable with this interface based on experience with Lightroom. So here we're actually tone mapping a 32-bit image within Lightroom and we have access to all the Lightroom controls, including the new radial filter, which I love. And we can use that to create a nice vignette effect. And there is our 32-bit image tone mapped within Lightroom's develop module. The thing that I really like about this technique is that we wind up with a very photorealistic image and not an overly processed image, such as you sometimes get from certain settings within your HDR processing software. So this is a nice, subtle effect. It's a great way to take advantages of the full dynamic range that you can capture with a bracketed set of images. And it's all done here in Lightroom with 32-bit image editing. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop and Lightroom tips and tricks and related information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, or you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.